In mid-May of 2016, a young, multiracial male seemingly disappears into thin air. It would be a disappearance with no clear indication of any suspicious motives or foul play. Seven years later, there has still been no trace of the 19-year-old. I'm going to take a deep dive into the life of Logan Schindelman and discuss the events leading up to his disappearance, as well as theories as to what caused him to vanish without a trace. Logan Drew Schindelman was born in Tumwater, Washington on June 27, 1996. His dad, who was a Saudi Arabian, was an absentee father who was never in his life and even left America before Logan was even born. As well, Logan's mom, Hannah, who was half black and half white, never had any relationship with Logan's dad and moved to Seattle to pursue art after he was born, leaving Logan and his older half-sister Chloe to be raised by his maternal grandmother. As a teen, he attended Tumwater High School and was a celebrated star defensive back on the school's football team and was a model student. But while he attended school, he suffered with an identity crisis because of his mixed race. Since he was raised by his Caucasian grandmother, he never got the opportunity to know more about the black side of his family. It was said that his grandmother made sure to distance him from his black family members, but she has since denied that claim and said that his black family members never even reached out to begin with. After his high school graduation in 2015, Logan attended Washington State University, which was located in Pullman, 300 miles away from his home in Tumwater. However, after finishing one year of his studies, he dropped out and moved back in with his grandmother. It was said that he was struggling while in school and distanced himself from his high school friends and hadn't made any new friends at university. After moving back home, Logan started to display paranoia, which was unusual for him. He believed that he was being watched from his bedroom window and that he was being followed. Not only was Logan living with his grandmother, but also with his half-sister Chloe and her boyfriend, whom Logan did not get along with. There were claims that Logan and her boyfriend had arguments, which turned physical at times. But his grandmother has since denied those claims and said that they just avoided each other while living together. Since Logan was out of school, he got employed in odd jobs to make money. He worked in a laundry facility at one point, and even worked as a laborer on his great aunt's five-acre farm. During that time, Logan was still going through his identity crisis and really started to question who he was and what his black side of the family was like. So he had reached out to his black relatives and he was able to meet up with them and was shown images of his black grandfather and uncle from his side of the family. It really helped put things into perspective for him. And he was even quoted saying, it feels good to see someone that looks like me. According to his African-American aunt, Logan very much wanted to know more about that side of his family because he wasn't getting any answers from his grandmother. And even mentioned that his grandmother would get upset if she found out that he was talking to his black relatives. I, he wanted some answers and he wasn't getting them at home. He said, if she finds out that I came here, she's going to be really mad. But again, she has since denied those claims. Shortly after me and his other relatives, Logan would then disappear off the face of the earth without a single trace. 
On May 19, 2016, while Logan and his grandmother were getting ready for work, Logan started to discuss about a weird topic. He had become nervous and had said that he had an epiphany while he was driving. Before he went on further, his grandmother brushed him off and suggested that they talk about it after work, which he would later regret. In the evening when Logan didn't get back from work, his grandmother decided to track his phone to see where he was at. The phone was located in Olympia, Washington, where his mother actually lived at that time, so the grandmother assumed that he was visiting her. However, when she called and asked his mother if she had seen him, she said that he never came by. The next day on May 20th, Logan still didn't come home, so she decided to report him as missing. But it was the weekend, the police station was closed, so she had to wait until the following Monday on the 23rd to report Logan as missing. When Logan's grandmother went to the station to report him missing, she told authorities that his phone placed his location near his mother's home. However, when authorities traced his phone activity, it actually showed that Logan had headed the opposite direction going north and south on Highway I-5 many times. Authorities were perplexed as to why he was moving in that pattern. What his grandmother didn't know was that on the day of his disappearance, May 20th, Logan's black 1996 Chrysler Sebring was discovered abandoned along a southbound lane of I-5 in Rochester, Washington. Rochester is approximately 20 miles south of Tumwater. His vehicle contained his phone, wallet, driver's license, and a few bags of food. That same day, authorities got many 911 calls around 2 p.m., all of them calling about a black Sebring drifting across the lanes of I-5 between Tumwater and Maytown, near the milepost 92. The vehicle crashed into the center median, and a six-foot-tall white male with either brown or red hair leapt out of the passenger seat of the Sebring and ran into the woods on the side of the interstate. And just that morning, an eyewitness said that they saw Logan and two white males standing by his vehicle that was parked on the right shoulder of the southbound lane on I-5 near exit 95. The witness claimed that the car was still parked there on her way back home, but that the hood was up. The witness was able to provide a description of the two white males with Logan. One was six feet tall, very thin build, with blonde straight hair and a bowl haircut. He also wore an extra small tank top and short shorts. The other one was also blonde, but his hair went down to his shoulders and he was wearing a flannel shirt with jeans. Authorities went into the woods and did a six hour, two mile search of the area with helicopters, tracking dogs, and even Logan's uncle, who was a retired sheriff who helped search for his nephew, but they didn't find anything. There has been a number of theories to explain what may have happened to Logan. One theory is that Logan left on his own to start a new life. Growing up as a multiracial teen, he's only known his Caucasian side of his family and has had to deal with a lot of racial remarks and questions. After getting to know his black relatives and his questions were being answered, he had an epiphany and no one really knew what it was about. As well, him dropping all of his friends and dropping out of school also helps to support this theory. A second theory is that his disappearance could have something to do with drugs that he was apparently using in high school, like marijuana. There is a theory that he may have owed somebody a lot of money for drugs and ran away from a drug debt, or that he was using harder drugs that could have led to an overdose. A third theory is that Logan may have had a mental breakdown after discussing about his black relatives. And with the family drama that has been present lately, 
and a fight with Chloe's boyfriend. That could have pushed him over the edge. So, with Logan having an identity crisis, it sent him spiraling, and he may have used marijuana to cope with what he was feeling, which led him to become paranoid and believing that he was being watched, which could have led him to take off or take his own life. And the last theory is that Logan may have been murdered, maybe possibly by the two blonde males last seen with him. However, authorities don't know if those males were ever involved or had any knowledge about his disappearance. As well, he could also have been assaulted or murdered as a case of mistaken identity, then abandoned when the perpetrators realized he was not their intended target. It's important to note that Chloe's boyfriend was considered a person of interest in Logan's disappearance, and even Logan's uncle still believes that he had something to do with it. However, the boyfriend did take a polygraph test and passed which removed him as a suspect. But it should be noted that polygraph tests can be unreliable and manipulated, which is why they aren't used as evidence in a court of law. To this day, Logan Schindelman's whereabouts are still unknown. At the time of his disappearance, he was severely allergic to peanuts and would usually be equipped with an EpiPen if he were to be exposed to them. But when he disappeared, he wasn't equipped with one. Logan was last seen wearing a black windbreaker, a white shirt, jeans, and Nike sneakers. Logan also has a scar on his left forearm. If you or anyone you know has any info regarding what happened to Logan, please contact the Thurston County Sheriff's Office at 360-786-5500. This is all for now on the case. What do you guys think happened to Logan? Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time on Melanin Mysteries.